Right now, everybody is freaking out about the new inflation coming in at 9.1%, and let's review the numbers. Meat and poultry are up 11.7%. Fruits and vegetables are up 8.1%. Airfares up 34.1%. Used cars up 7.1%, and gas is up 59.9%. When seeing these numbers, our first reaction is holy crap, especially for me when I see the cost for airfares and gas. And while the media and most of the YouTubers play to the pandemonium, I'm going to take the opposite approach. Relax, we've got this. Let me ask you a very simple question. With the inflation rate now at 9.1%, how much of your life is going to change? Most likely the answer is not very much. Are you going to cut back on dining out, groceries, Starbucks, or driving? Sure, things are going to cost more, but most likely your lifestyle will go on unchanged. This will not be true for many Americans that have poor money management skills and live paycheck to paycheck. And if you are not where you want to be financially, then look into the FIRE movement, which stands for Financial Independence Retirement retire early. You decide if you are going to retire broke or rich. Back to inflation. What's likely going to happen now is the Federal Reserve will get more aggressive and raise the interest rates, which will in turn hurt the stock market and increase the possibility of a recession. While this isn't what we want, this does create opportunities for investors like Warren Buffett and ourselves who are in a position to buy stocks at a discount. And Warren Buffett just bought more Occidental Petroleum, and he is also well positioned with stocks that will do well in the current market. So instead of spreading fear and worrying about inflation, which we really have no control over anyway, let's talk about making money with some long-term stocks and opportunities that we have right now. I work hard to provide you with no-fluff videos packed with real data and information to help you invest better. And all I ask is that you hit the like button to help get this video over 700 likes. Please take one second of your time to give this video a thumbs up. Thanks a lot. I really appreciate it. All right, as always, now's the time to grab a huge cup of coffee and hang on because this is not your normal stock channel. Warren Buffett and Berkshire Hathaway are now the largest shareholders of Occidental Petroleum, which is up 87% year to date. I know energy, oil, and gas stocks have taken a big pullback in the last month, but remember, Warren is playing a long game and he would not be in Oxy and Chevron oil if he did not see energy costs increasing. And did you know that Berkshire Hathaway will make around $904 million in dividends in 2022 from Chevron, which has a 4.12% dividend yield? And right now, I think we've got a huge buying opportunity for energy stocks. So what are the best stocks to buy when inflation spikes? Warren Buffett likes American Express, Coca-Cola, Apple, and Chevron. Let's jump over to beastmodeanalysis.com to look at the fundamentals. We're now at beastmodeanalysis.com and let's jump over for our side-by-side -side analysis. And we're going to be looking at Occidental Petroleum, Chevron Corporation, Coca-Cola, Apple, American Express, and also Berkshire Hathaway, the B shares. So let's start off with the PE ratio. And the first thing we notice is we've got a bunch of low PE ratios, which is very typical for Warren Buffett. Our highest one on the day here is going to be Coca-Cola at 26.4. And we can see that even Berkshire Hathaway, they're very low at 7.3. Now the beast mode is broken down into different sections to make it real easy to do a fundamental analysis. Let's start with the income statement and this tells us whether or not the companies are making money and different companies have to report different things. So anytime you see an NAN or a blank, that's because these are not required sections for these companies to report. So if we come down, we look at the operating margin, we always want that to be 10% or higher when we're looking for long-term stocks. And here we can see our highest on the day is actually Berkshire Hathaway at 31.49. Other companies coming in strong are Coca-Cola and Apple. Then we can also see the net income margin. The higher, the better. Our winner on the day here is going to be Apple at 25.88%. Also, Berkshire Hathaway is coming in very strong at 25.32%. And the beast mode is also color-coded where light blue is the most important part for that section for me, and light green is the second most important. Capital ratios can also give us some useful information. So let's take a look at the debt to equity. And if you need to know what anything is, just simply hover over that little I and a pop-up will show up. So the debt to equity ratio compares a company's total liabilities to its shareholder equity and can be used to evaluate how much leverage a company is using. Higher leverage ratios tend to indicate a company or stock with higher risk to shareholders. And here we've got a down arrow, which is our cheat sheet. And that tells us that we want a low value. So here we can see our lowest values are actually Chevron Corporation and Berkshire Hathaway coming in at 0.22.
Next, let's scroll on down and let's take a look at the balance sheet. And this tells us whether or not the companies are financially stable. Here we like to look at what I call the tattle ratio. And that's because it tattles on the company's overall strength. And this is where we simply compare the total assets to the total liabilities. And ideally, we want that number to come in at at least one and two or higher is the best case scenario. So if we look at Chevron, we can see their total assets are $239.5 billion. Their total liabilities are $99.5 billion, giving them a tattle ratio of 2.41 and importantly all of these companies are over one our second highest on the day is berkshire hathaway very strong as well at 2.16 the key performance metrics, you'll notice all of these are highlighted in blue, and that's because this section is very important and insightful to the company's overall condition. Here we want to see a lot of black and blue. So for revenue growth last year, no surprise, Chevron, an oil company, came in at 64.71%. Coming in at number two was Occidental Petroleum at 45.74%. Free cash flow margin, this is a critical number, especially with inflation and a recession that could be coming. And free cash flow, this measures a company's ability to expand and its business and pay returns to shareholders using only the money generated through current operations. So basically this tells us they've got enough money coming in to pay all their bills and grow the business. A very, very important number. And here these guys are very strong. Occidental Petroleum, 29.51%. Chevron, 13.57%. Coca-Cola, extremely strong at 29%. Apple, 25%. And then we've got Berkshire Hathaway at 7.37%. Our rule of 40 indicator, this is another very handy thing that I like to look at. And this is a ratio that measures a company's combined growth rate and profit margin. Many venture capital and growth equity investors believe this ratio should exceed 40%, especially for software companies. So anytime we can have an established company that's over 40%, that's a great thing. And look at all these companies, all very strong. Our strongest two currently are Occidental Petroleum and Chevron at 75 and 78%. And once oil takes a step back, these numbers will come down, but I expect that they will stay strong for at least the short term and hopefully through the end of this year and into next year. We also have my FNR indicator. What's that? Well, this is the free cash flow plus the net income margin plus the revenue growth over the last 12 months. The higher that number, the better. And our winner right now is, again, Chevron Corporation. Very strong. Then we also include the book value ratio. And here, the higher the number, the better. Our best on the day is Berkshire Hathaway. Management effectiveness tells us how well management is generating returns for their investors. Here we want a lot of black and blue and no red. And if we look at return on equity, that's a very common one. Our winner is Apple. And actually, Apple is winning on pretty much most of these different categories. So Apple is our clear winner in this section. And the last section is the growth metrics and companies should be consistently growing their business. My favorite to look at is net income growth. The higher, the better. Chevron, 382%, followed by looks like AXP coming in at 157%. And then we've got Occidental Petroleum at 115 and Berkshire Hathaway at 111%. Let's take a look at the chart on Oxy because we have a famous squeeze play that is setting up right now. We're now looking at Occidental Petroleum on Thinkorswim and let's go over the chart setup. And I told you we've got a good squeeze that is setting up. So if we come down to the Momentum Dream Indicator, you can see we've got a squeeze alert and that just simply means we've got these red dots right here and that's exactly what we're looking for. We can see we've got four dots. We're on a day chart, so that's four days. Our momentum is going up and the color is yellow because it's below the zero line. And our ideal situation is to get a good buy signal whenever we're close to the zero line, which is this horizontal line on this indicator and the horizontal line on the lower indicator as well. So we can see that our momentum is clearly going up exactly what we're looking for. Now, if we come down to our lower indicator, we can see our short-term trend is neutral and we're coming back up towards that zero line. What else have we got? We've got the Occidental Petroleum revenue growth forecast is 34.2%. We can see that we've came down. We've got some pretty good support down here at 54.20 and let's go over our top percent change bar. We've got a PE ratio right around nine. Over one week, they're down 1.9%. In one month, they've dropped 9.2%. Over two months, they're down 3%. Over six months, they're up 79%. And one year, they're up 93%. Next up, we've got a recommended trail stop. And this is a possible trail stop, but it also speaks to the stock's volatility. Right now, it's coming in at 4%, which is high. And if I was gonna set a trail stop on that, I would set it at recent support or maybe around 10 or 11%. 
7%. We can see that Oxy does pay a small dividend yield. We've got their net income margin here, and then we've got our risk management bar. And this is assuming that we've got a $25,000 account, and we wouldn't want to risk more than 5% on any one trade. So the most we would buy would be $1,250 for that account. And then our golden question is, will I risk $178 and buy 22 shares for $1,276? Our target price would be $70.16. Our risk to reward ratio is 1.5, and our profit per share would be $12.15. And I really like the risk management bar because it does all of the math for us, and it tells us how many shares that we could buy and that we're only risking 178. And this risk is based on the stock's volatility and the recommended trail stop of 14%. I hope that helps you out. And if you want to grab my indicators or how I do my charts, I've got a link for that down below as well. And over at Tip Ranks, we can see Oxy has a moderate buy rating with a price target of $75.15, which gives it a 29.6% of upside. Occidental Petroleum is a great stock to consider buying. Plus, I bought another stock yesterday as well. I really hope that you enjoyed today's video. And if you want all of my trading alerts or to learn how to read charts, trade options, receive our hot stock watch list, or use my custom indicators, the links are in the description down below. Thanks again for watching. Peace, and I'll see you on the next video.